Welcome back. The excitement's real. I did, you know, I did my usual professional thing, like, and this is not going to be professional, is it? What, this pod? <laughs> well, it will be, but it won't be. I, I'm... Because we're just going to probably laugh the whole time. I, I'm excited to see you again. I'm excited to see you again. I feel like we developed a, a true bond. We did. The first time round. We haven't seen each other since. No. But, you know, we've no, been no. talking on text. We have. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's good. COVID's I've, I've got, I think, yeah, COVID. That's why. Yeah, it's... It's a, it's a barrel of laughs. Yeah, we would have hung out every day otherwise. I mean, Absolutely. At least. Crossfitting, <laughs> jiu-jitsu. <laughs> so what's all this you got on the table? I bought you a gift. So I've got the latest clean gin for you. Yeah, this which, one. Which is certified delicious. Yeah, gin and tonic. It's actually really good. Well, there <laughs> you go. Look, anyone struggling with dry, dry jan at the moment? I know you're desperate to talk about that. But, but <laughs> this, this is, as I said last time, you know, we're always looking to make the products better. So this is the latest gin. Mix that with tonic. Yeah. A bit of ice, slice of lemon. Is that what that is? Yeah, you don't need, well, with that minus the ice and lemon because you didn't have any. Okay. So basically what has happened here is that you've turned this into a focus group so for research purposes. Absolutely. Brilliant. And I thought, I thought we'd just spend a bit of time talking about how brilliant the company is <laughs> and, and, and the innovation and, and why we're the best. Okay. Before that, though, this isn't pee in a bottle. It's not. It? No, no. Well, you know, it could be. It could be. I, imagine if it was. I, you know, I do trust you, though. Okay, I, I, at first, when I looked at it, I was like, there's some people, if I took this off them, I'd probably worry. But that's, I that, believe you. Did that's, you. That's a multi-million quid product, mate. Is it? Yeah. That's, How, that's the unreleased latest iteration of clean w whiskey alternative okay legit business question yeah how much have you spent developing whiskey, clean um, whiskey? it's hard to say exactly because we, we kind of develop a lot of things you know side by side and we work with different flavor houses and, and professionals but ma- mostly we've been working that on that for about nine months and it will have taken up i don't know maybe 30 percent of MPD budget yeah. for the year. And I how much get, is well, the total I won't, I won't give away <laughs> <laughs> how much we spend on MPD, but one thing, one thing we do care about is being, you know, at the forefront of innovation and making sure that, you know, our liquids are best in class. Well, in a way, but, you, so a lot, a, lot of, a lot of time and effort has gone into developing that whiskey. Yeah. And there's all sorts of stuff, you know, in it that you wouldn't have thought a non-alcoholic spirit alternative would go to the lengths to do. We're looking to release that like particularly into the US market and for it to just be number one, best in class. Well, you ha- you can't, you're you the first to market in a way, in a lot of places. So you kind of have to develop it yourself anyway, don't you? It's yeah, not I like mean, there's a well, you can copy. Uh, back, back when we last spoke, are you going straight from the bottle? I'm going, yeah. what, shall I? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Have a little, have a, a, a little shot. It, it is, it's not a trick. It smells like whiskey though. Good, good. <laughs> not, that, that, not that it's not going <laughs> to. It, it, it definitely <laughs> should smell like whiskey. I don't know what I was expecting it to smell like. And, and you've got to take into account, right, this is straight. So you're drinking this with, with no mixer, you know, yeah. non-alcoholic alternatives okay. are often like designed to kind of work in a cocktail, yeah. you know, as like an attack on the mocktail. That is straight. Straight. Tell me what you think. And there's no alcohol in this? No alcohol. Zero. Zero. Less than 0.5%. Okay. So alcohol free by law. What do you think? It's nice. It's smooth. Good. Like, and, and you've got that little kind of dry alcohol burn. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it tastes like whiskey. But well, it, it, you this heard, isn't you iconic, it, is you, it? You heard it here first, everyone. It won't come in that little plastic bottle by the time <laughs> it gets to market. You'll be pleased to know. <laughs> Can you imagine that you, you do all that research, spend all that money, and it yeah. comes out like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's a particularly, it's a cool product. And particularly, it's interesting because, you know, the, this kind of stuff is, is steered by an already existing, you know, booming alcohol market. So anywhere that's, you know, that would be a really exciting product for India, as an example. Yeah. Do you know what? <clears throat> I hardly drink, but it's quite nice to have it. It tastes like, obviously, gin. Yeah. It's quite nice to have a have a drink. Well, it is nice, yeah, particularly, you know, as, as I think we covered last time, I, I used to drink to excess, you know, pretty regularly with work in the city as I was, a, I was a city broker and, you know, worked in nightlife for a number of years. So it was kind of normal to have a full full strength alcohol drink in your hands, like at work, yeah. you know. So, and socially, obviously, of course, I've always been pretty social. And, you know, I think after drinking, you know, high levels of, of alcohol for a while, I think it just, it just slows you down, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. Well, it did in my case anyway. Why don't you drink a lot? Well, do you ever worry this is like a gateway drug back to alcohol? Because I haven't drank for a while, but now I kind of want to have a drink. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is going to make me drink again. Well, I think, well, well, you could just have another one of those. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I suppose. But I, then, su- I suppose. It's well, not, we're not a company that's targeting um, like total abstinence. Right. We, we, we're, we're not anti-booze like yeah. in any sense. Uh, and actually most of our customers and clients, whatever you want to call them, do drink alcohol. So it's like a way of effectively moderating, I suppose, or yeah. drinking clean in between. Uh, as our white paper to government suggests, and uh, I know it's just, it's just it's more of a way of just having a choice, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like before, back when I was sober, you know, you'd either, or well, sorry, back when I used to drink, you'd either be drinking, yeah, or you'd be drinking diet coke, yeah, or soda water. Yeah. There was no like middle ground. And then kind of alcohol free beer took off, um, but that's been around for like twenty years yeah. because the products finally caught up and you know became. A, a decent drink so people started buying into it and this is where we're heading with kind of spirits just like you're in a bar you fancy a mojito or you know something a margarita you know you're driving later you can't be bothered uh to 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 feel rough the following morning yeah. have a clean margarita yeah makes sense mm. yeah because when i have a hangover now it it's like yeah lasts forever yeah like, well why is that are you how old are you now i don't know 40 okay. i actually yeah how old are you now you, I'm 33. You don't look a day older than me, but I, that. But I did used to drink. A I lot. didn't drink as much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> but the, I know we joked on WhatsApp that we were going to have nothing to talk about, but I actually made loads of notes. Oh, excellent! So I've got uh, um, some really good questions. Okay. Three. No, I'm just kidding. I've yeah. got loads. Okay. Um, well, no, good. Last time I saw you was like what a year ago, ish. About a year ago, yeah. Like, and COVID's obviously still going on. Yeah. Has it affected your business? Um, I think, I mean, yeah, but both positively and negatively, I suppose. So like, you know, the, the on-trade aspect of the business obviously was quite badly affected. Not that it was ever prominent in our strategy. You know, we, our, our strategy was never to be like an old school drinks brand that would get listings in bars and pubs yeah. and then go to retail. We wanted to go straight to retail through, you know, direct to consumer sales, retail, yeah. Yeah. you know, social media. So um, it, it did affect us, but it was more you know, people's behavior that shifted than a lack of opportunity. So, you know, back when the first lockdown hit, people didn't really know how to react or behave. Lots, millions of people drank more than they would ordinary, ordinarily drink. You know, millions of people stopped drinking. You know, it, it had an adverse effect on the way people behave. Yeah. Um, but in any case, I think nowadays, you know, not to be overly opportunistic, but in order to be a successful business, you have to just understand what's going on around you and mold and react accordingly you know there's always ways of um soldiering through anything yeah providing you you've got you know a good head on you and a good team around you has has the this whole pandemic has it created more people drinking alcohol i'm, I'm sure you have like marketing studies and all this kind of stuff that goes on yeah like you read things that, that loads of more people there's more suicides more people yeah. drinking all this kind of stuff <clears throat> Do you have any inside knowledge of actually what's going on, like trend wise? And, you know, as you say, more people probably drinking at home than they used to way more, actually, probably. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so a lot of people drank to excess at home. So supermarket um, sales of alcohol absolutely skyrocketed. I think initially it was by, you know, upwards of 60 percent uh, alcohol sales were up. Uh, it, for in supermarkets and then yeah. you know people would drink at home but that obviously led to people drinking earlier excessive drinking at home and again not to sound you know opportunistic but it presented an opportunity to present people with a choice you know yeah. like if you are drinking gin and tonics at home because you're you know but this wasn't our marketing obviously but, obviously, it, yeah. but you're bored or you know you can't leave the house or, or, or whatever and you want to put your feet up and have an alcoholic drink now you can have a, a gin and tonic without any alcohol yeah. um but that, that, that also led to a lot of people reassessing um, their, their drinking habits. Like as an example, 30% of people who drink alcohol nowadays in the UK are engaged in dry January. That's more than ever before. Really? Uh, you know, it's 20% up on last year, actually. And, and, it, and it's kind of, I think this whole, um, this, this whole market is, is aided by uh, the younger generation drinking less anyway. You know, I wouldn't consider myself... Uh, a trailblazer for for young people that that don't drink. You know, th- th- my reasons for for not wanting to drink are probably very different to a teenager's. But you know, you can read stuff, and you know, often people can find marketing material to support 
you know, whatever their view might be. You see a lot of that with, with yeah. COVID, right? Yeah. You know, anti-vaxxers are able to easily support their view with with um, with plenty of marketing, mar- marketing material. <laughs> no, and, that, and, that, and then there's people who believe in, in vaccination who are obviously able to be supportive of science as well. So, yeah. you know, you can often find, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm skeptical to always be led by data because data comes in in many forms. And as I said, usually you can find something to support whatever claim you want. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, I have read somewhere that 50% of kids that leave college don't want to drink, you know, that's one in two people, you know, back, back, back in the day when I was leaving school or whatever, if I wasn't drinking, you're on your own, yeah. you know, absolutely everyone yeah. was just getting, t- in fact, it was cool to do so. It was cool to be out late. It was cool to be the loudest, you know, like whoever lasts the longest, you know, that, that was, that was a bit of me, <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, yeah. Whereas now that doesn't really seem to be the case. There's all these exciting and interesting opportunities that are presenting themselves kind of all over the world yeah. um, in stuff that's very difficult to even understand. And we'll move on to it, I'm sure. But, you know, that first there was crypto, you know, now there's NFTs, you know, and it's just, it's just that there's so much, there seems to be so much money out there flying around, you know, like it's an unbelievable, um, it, it must be so difficult for, for some banks to be looking at like these markets emerging because it's like, it's it's really hard to fathom yeah like what's going on but that's similar i guess for us and drinks it's just like a few years ago if you'd said right i'm going to create a line of non-alcoholic you know gins rums whiskeys and tequilas everyone yeah. would have said well huh? like what are you smoking yeah but now it kind of makes sense to people like there's a there's a really really big growing demand for it yeah um uh, and you know there's hundreds if not thousands of competitive brands doing what we do now really? but there weren't when we last spoke so when we last spoke a year well, ago no. there was like three yeah and there's how many now hundreds i really don't know but there are hundreds really yeah i wouldn't be like i wouldn't be able to put a finger on on the exact amount of competition that we have um but not there, not not least because i try not to pay too much attention to it you know sure. like all all competition is good competition as far as i'm aware the more competition you have you know, the, the, the more evidence there is of a growing market, yeah. fantastic. And also, you know, I would have hoped that in the, in the two years that we've been trading and the three years that I've been doing this, um, you know, we have a lot of insight that, that newcomers won't. Also, you know, the, the, the fundraising on our side has been particularly aggressive. Yeah. Um, so I'm not so much worried about what other people are doing, to be honest. Makes sense. Um, Talking of fundraising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cash. Yeah. Last time we spoke, how much did you raise? It was like um, the, the, where fir- were the we? first start. It was. It wasn't. Was it nine million or was it two point one? I can't remember. No. So we raised. We raised two point one at the very beginning. Beginning without seed. a product. We just got. So you we, had one. we had some kind of product. It's. It's not what we have now. Yeah. You. You had. You yeah. had. Not. Well, I was actually telling the story earlier. Yeah. Um, to, to somebody today, actually, weirdly, um, yeah. not for broadcast. So don't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, no, I was just explaining how actually I thought that the, the kind of naivety going into it and the lack of experience and the lack of knowledge was a massive factor in yeah. Lightspeed investing in me. So like, you know, I, I won't name her just in case because I haven't asked her, but, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind. But, you know, a, a director of Lightspeed and I had lunch when I had, yeah. you know, some... But let's be honest, pretty standard product, you know. But at the time, it was good. It was an idea. Yeah. It was really? an idea. Yeah, yeah. And she did. She did a million pounds at lunch. Yeah. She's in America, right? Yeah, but she flew over not right, to right. see me. But yeah. like, but I, I, we we went for lunch, and she tasted it, um, compared it to Seedlip, and liked the idea, yeah. and pledged a million pounds towards my two point one million pound round. I didn't know the difference between pre and post money. I didn't know really how much we needed. I didn't have a team. Like I didn't have a deck. So I didn't have a proposal at all. <laughs> and, she, and, and she was like, you know, she was like, what's the, what's the uh, valuation? And I said, five million pounds. And she said, and she said, is that pre or, she said, is that pre or post money? And I said, um, yes. I don't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. No, no, honestly. And I kind of knew nothing. And then I said to her, she asked me all these questions, you know, how would you tackle this? How would you tackle that? And I just said, look, I, I don't know. Like I, I, what, what I do know is I think millions of people need this and want this, and I think there's there's about to be a massive market. What are you based? What are you basing that on? Don't know. Gut feeling. Like I can't believe it doesn't exist. And, and you know, I've been out and about my whole life. I've lived a very full life, and you know, I can imagine this being in every bar all over the world. You know, I just I can't see it any other way. Yeah. 
She loved it. We've got a great friendship. She's supported us in every round. Round the Series A, uh, we raised um, we raised a further seven million. That's it. Uh, at a much higher valuation, which is when we were talking to you, and we're now bang in the middle of raising a further twenty million. And that is so for we, we've had an initial close of ten. Okay, so you're halfway we've completed. Yeah, yeah, and that's to go through to America, right? Yeah, so we, no, we're in America. Oh, you are, so, so so we're in seven states. We're available D to C all over yeah. the country. Uh, we have a whole team over there. Yeah. Like it's amazing. We have we have a we have an awesome distribution deal. It, it's it's like I couldn't be happier and more proud of yeah. like where we are. But like I can't stress the importance of of surrounding yourself with good people. And yeah. and, and you know and and we had we had a whole restructure you know here in the UK and you know there've been there's been ups and downs. It's been it's been. Aside from having kids yeah. and marrying, you know, the love of my life, it's been the most exciting journey I've ever had in my life because, you know, you get dealt hands that are really um, just unlikely and hard to swallow and you have to work through it and you kind of grow as a person. And then there's, and then there's just these things that happen which you just can't believe. It's kind of really euphoric. Give me an example. Um, okay. A positive uh, and a negative. Okay, sure. Um, so there was a time after we... So did I speak to you during Series A, the, the, the 7 million round? Yeah, you've done that, I think. We've just, just, just done did, that, yeah. Okay, did I tell you about um, the, the lady who, who lives above me? No. Okay, so... so same story or...? No, no, well, I don't know. I, ho- I hope it's not the same story. Honestly, I can't remember what we spoke about <laughs> yeah, before, but it's a good story. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'll it, ta- I don't know about the lady above you. Okay, so she, she um, is a woman called Ursula Burns. Okay. She she's she served on the board of Diageo. She's she was on the board of Uber. She's a big investor. She's you know frequently on CNN. Diageo is a big drinks company. Huge. It, it is. Yeah. And she lived above you. No, no. So so listen to this. It's okay, amazing right. actually. And she she she's a, she's a you know an African American. She was the first African American lady uh, to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. She ran Xerox. Okay. Um, and and worked there for many years. You know, she has a book out. It's amazing. You should yeah. you should you should look into it. Okay. And she um yeah. So I, I had no idea who this like lovely lady was, and I'd cross her in the lift and you know whatever, uh, help her with her bags from time to time if I happened to notice she was carrying her shopping. Uh, and one day it occurred to me, I was like, that she lived in the penthouse, and I was like, that's a you know it's a, it's a punchy apartment. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I was like, so 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 I kind of I googled her. And I just couldn't believe it. And I, I was just like, what? She lives above <laughs> us. She's on the board of Diageo. She runs Vion. She, she, she does all this incredible stuff. Yeah. Um, so I got a kind of package together with all the clean coat goods. And I went up and I, I knocked on her door. And I just said, you know, can I talk to you about my drinks business? Because, you know, she didn't know what I did. Um, did she know you from She actually thought I was a there. professional chef because she'd seen me on MasterChef. No. <laughs> yeah. so, so she, she's like, you're that chef from MasterChef. And I was just like, I'm not a chef. Okay. Uh, I'm actually an <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> so, so, um, so you'd be very disappointed if I was a chef. Uh, so, so anyway, so came in. Anyway, long story short, because it is a long story and I, I don't want it to take up the, all our time. But she tasted it. She loved it. She thought the idea was really exciting and interesting. And she, she invested like really heavily into that round. And she said, you need, um, you need to talk to some of my friends. Like my friends will really be able to help you. In America, uh, yeah, and I was like, "Okay, great." Uh, and I ended up doing a di- long story short again. Ended up uh, on a phone call with Jim Clerkin, who was the former CEO of of Moet Hennessy, uh, North America. He's former CEO of Jim Beam, former yeah. CEO of Guinness. You know, like a big, heavy hitting drinks guy. Um, then there was another guy who who was uh, I won't name him again, just in case. I know Jim will be fine with it, but I, sure. I won't name the sure, other sure. guy. Yeah. Uh, he's a, a direct, he was an ex-director of Coca-Cola, really high up on the same call. And then the third guy was Hugh Jackman. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wolverine. What? <laughs> on, on the call. <laughs> and I was just like, and I knew I was going to talk, I, I knew they'd, they'd mentioned it, but I was just like, it's kind of, I'll be looking forward to, 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 to this call happening. Anyway, so we're having a call and Hugh's opening up to me about, you know, like all sorts of stuff and alcohol and his life. And I'm sitting there thinking... Well, fuck me, I'm doing something right, aren't I? Like, Jesus Christ, I've got Hugh Jackman telling me that, you know, this is a cool business idea. Jim Clerkin declared himself in on the call. He went, he went I'm sorry, I can't stay till the end of the call. Uh, I'm in, no worries, uh, I gotta go, bye. And just hangs up and I was like, 
Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, anyway, so I ended up I ended up doing a deal with um, Jim and the guy from Coca Cola. We now all work together. Jim's yeah. built out a team uh, in in the states, but like Jim Clerkin, the former CEO of Moet Hennessy, yeah. is my US CEO. And like two years ago, I was a mug on reality TV. So like, so so to be honest, <laughs> and your friends are Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say we're friends, but like, I hope he remembers the call. You know, it was a bit. I love him. You know, who who doesn't love Hugh Jackman? But Wait, so why was he on the call? Was that because he, they he, wanted to like he, he impress was on, you? Or? No, he was on as a potential face, like oh. a potential kind of like oh, US like, co-founder, like a Ryan Reynolds type. Because he does gym aviator gym. Because aviator Ryan gym. Reynolds does aviation gym. No, but like also the guy that organised the call like is is really close with him, and they've done some business stuff together. So we wanted to see if he would like you know be involved. But actually, looking back on it, and obviously no disrespect to, to Hugh, it's kind of that would have been like a premature jump to right. have done a big equity deal with, you know, a white man in his middle age type yeah. thing, you know, yeah, before yeah. having tested out a market, you know, who know, we didn't know who would be looking at this type of thing in the States, whether it's, you know, young gym goers or, or middle aged women or, or, or sure. whatever. So, you know, it would have been, I mean, it would have been awesome, right? To have Hugh Jackman as a business partner, but still can in the future, potentially. You can imagine the um, viral videos between him and Ryan. Well, that, they've done I actually before. mentioned that on the, I said, I said, you know, currently it's aviation versus coffee. Wouldn't you want an aviation versus non-alk aviation? Just yeah. to make him feel like a mug. Yeah. Um, which he laughed at. It wasn't, too, it, it didn't come to pass. And, and, you know, God bless him. I absolutely adore you. But, you know, the whole thing was looking to be quite expensive, oh. um, of course, at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he has a lot of other stuff going on. So, you know, I think if we we're going to do a deal like that, we'd need a lot of time from that person. And I think it's unfair to assume that he would have wanted to have spent that time with us, I guess. You never know. I know. Well, he's probably pretty chill the last year doing not much. He's pretty epic, to be honest. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So basically, you broke America because you went upstairs in a lift and yeah. knocked on some lady's door. I wouldn't say we've broken America yet, but I look, we're certainly we're certainly en route to, to being, you know, the world's largest independent no and low spirits brand which is a bit of a mouthful but so, it's kind of cool so the guys in america they they set up a distribution deal basically which is the hardest thing to do yeah again you know, i don't mean that. to sound kind of secretive but yeah we have we have we have a we have a deal with one of the world's largest wholesalers and, yeah. and you know it, it's it's pretty epic because Monster, en Monster Energy, yeah. when they came out, the reason they got so big is because Coca-Cola distributed them, Yeah, from what I know. So they went from, like, no one knows them, to Coca-Cola doing a deal and distributing them across the world in yeah. every bloody thing. So they went from, like, nothing to, like, global. Well, you like know, we, we, fa we face a lot of issues with growing a business this quickly, but, you know, if we have good rate of sale in the States and there's pickup, we have the channel to distribute whatever we need, you know, so, Anything. yeah. So, you know, all we need now is to focus, you know, the race. Whiskey. There you go. Whiskey. <laughs> uh, all, all, huge, all, we, all we need now is for people to, to really, cause America is slightly behind the UK when it comes to like thinking about this stuff, there's a lot less competition yeah. and the market's much bigger. You know, we've identified 12 million people who are, you know, who, earn good money who have been interested in alcohol free beer but don't really drink beer who would be open to the idea of you know something else you know outside of a mocktail so yeah. it's kind of the 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 opportunity was likened uh to greek yogurt yeah. by, by this by this incredible uh woman called gina kapaz who who used to do a lot for perno and, and moet uh, in terms of uh kind of research market research and she did like I mean, when I say extensive research, you know, that it cost us an arm and a leg to, for them to just dive into the States. Where yeah. is the opportunity? Like, who is going to buy this? How affluent do they need to be? How old are they? You know, what do they do? Who are these people? Yeah. Um, and she said that, you know, the, the opportunity is, is, you know, real. So what is your, what is your target market? Can, can you tell me? Because yeah. a competition might be going, oh, I'm going to steal all their research. Well, yeah, well that, 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 look, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to be paranoid, but I do try and keep you know, certain things to ourselves, obviously, because it, is, it, it's, it wasn't wildly competitive, but it is now. Yeah. Like now we do get like, you know, our deck fell into the hands of like one of our competitors and we were all like, you know, fuck, what do we do about that? And it's like, well, it's just, it's just an investment it's deck. Gonna yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so 
actually made a point of getting theirs. I was like, I'm going to get theirs. Uh, and and, and we, we, end, we ended up getting it. It turns out it says a lot of the same stuff that ours does. Perfect. Uh, but no, it's, um, no, you know, it's, it's pretty much, you know, back when it was just an idea, I was trying to figure yeah. out, you know, who, who are we going to sell this to? Because all anyone asked me was, what's the target audience? What's the target audience? Sure. And for me, it's, you know, whether or not you drink too much or not at all. Yeah. You're my target audience. Like, like you know, if you, if you drink too much alcohol and you want to refrain and or moderate, drink Clinko. Yeah. If you don't drink at all, drink Clinko to feel included. Like when I was completely, well, I am completely teetotal, but when I started being completely teetotal, it's easy. And I'm, I fit in anywhere, by the way. I'm happy to, to chat, chill, talk to absolutely anyone, like no worries. But you can feel slightly excluded like it doesn't have to bruise you it doesn't have to be a problem yeah. but like you know if you're in a bar or a restaurant and like you know the night's kicking off and everyone's doing shots and drinking gin and tonics and you're yeah. sat there you know with a Heineken Zero you kind of, like you do feel like why am I feeling left out for this positive decision that I'm making it's not the same as like oh I'm going to go for a 10k run today everyone goes good on you mate Yeah, you know it's different it's like why aren't you drinking yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because, it, yeah, it's like, yeah, I, I say the same thing because sometimes I'll go out and I'll be like, I don't want to drink. Yeah. But you're like... Are you, you pregnant? Yeah, well, you're hesitant, aren't you? You're sort of like, do I say or do I just sort of just like... order a tonic and hope no one notices, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? A friend of mine at uni, to save money though, yeah. when it was his round, yeah, instead of buying vodka lemonades, he used to just buy everyone lemonade. Oh, lovely. And, and nobody wouldn't even notice because everyone was hammered. So he says, yeah. he t- that was three years later, he told me. Yeah. I was like, what? So every round you've ever bought has just been Just Sprite. lemonade. He lovely. Went, yeah. He goes, yeah, I'm doing that forever. I was like, <laughs> no, I was like, no one noticed. It's, so it's weird. Like, it, is a, it, it is a funny one, isn't it? But it's quite an aggressive watch, that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Think, <laughs> things are going well. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to that? I, I do. Um, I love watches. Yeah. I've had a I've had a passion for watches since I for as long as I can remember. Um, what is it? Which one is that? It's a seventy two oh one. You're okay. obsessed with you're obsessed with the value of things, aren't you? Absolutely not. I don't yeah. buy watches. All right. No, but I mean, like you're always after like figures and oh yeah, and how figures. much money you raise, and <laughs> what model it is. Figures are the best. Yeah, I yeah. love like cash, cash, cash. It's, it's great. um, no, it's, profit's it's, a good thing. I think it's the most positive one in the world. Yeah. If you didn't have profit. Yeah. There'd be no economy. Yeah. No, you correct. don't have an like, economy, there's no jobs. No, I so, agree. Yeah. So it's a good word. Yeah. People that think it's negative, silly. It's not negative. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> so you told me you told me a positive story about the lift. Yeah. Obviously in business nothing always goes to plan. Ninety five percent of the time people say it's staff. What's your biggest biggest difficulty? Um I guess like one of the more arduous things, you know, people always say how hard it is to raise money, like particularly like proper, you know, real sums of money, you know, we'll be knocking on, you know, 30 million pounds raised in two years and a bit, you know, that's a lot for an FMCG startup by anyone's standards. And sometimes people don't do what they say they're going to do and it disturbs the peace. You know, like there's a lot of yes men out there. And obviously, I won't name anything, but like you know, you can uh, the, the fund. The one thing I can I can say is the fundraising for the company has always gone just really swimmingly because I believe you know that we're pretty effective in explaining, uh, backed with sales and data, you know, the plan yeah. and what we're what we're doing and what we're about and why it's relevant and you know people buy into it. So it's never been complicated. There was an instance where. We'd, um, <laughs> we were supposed to be closing on a certain day and we had, you know, a lot of people who had wired the money and signed the docs and, you know, we, we do everything, obviously, well, we've always done everything completely legitimately, but it becomes even more uh, of like a process, you know, the more you grow just to yeah. make sure that, you know, absolutely everything is bond proof and that, you know, money's held in escrow till a certain time so that all the money can hit the account at the same time and yeah. people can receive their shares at the same time. So you're not just, you don't just have an open round, yeah. right? So, yeah. you know, when, when, and, and yeah, again, this, this one guy just went on some like mad power trip on the day we were closing and he was just like, was big check, huge check. And he was like, I'm, I'm not doing it today. Like I'll do it whenever I feel like it. And it's just like, well, well no, like, 
today's closing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they were just like, oh, well, well, where from? We don't have that. And, you know, if I feel like investing, I'll invest. It's like, but you've told me like three times that you're definitely doing it like on this day. So we yeah. organized the close to be everyone. on this day yeah, so yeah, that yeah. everyone can close on the same day. Like yeah. you're being selfish. Yeah. It's like, I won't be, I won't be spoken to you like that. It's like, and you ended up just not doing it. So I had essentially 24 hours to plug like a big hole. How, uh, how, how big are we talking? <laughs> A million pounds. A, qu- a million quid. Yes, yeah, so I had 24 hours to, to close a million pounds, basically. And what was the total amount? amount? The 10, 10. So for the first... So 10%. Was, it, it you had to find 10%. No, percent no yeah. But, but it's harder than that because obviously you've been speaking to people, you know, and yeah. you, you've been going through a very... Inj- I love fundraising. Like, yeah. it's, it's an opportunity to put your, you know heart in front of you and you you, you you know this is my soul yeah. like I it's love I love doing it yeah, yeah. so yeah. so for me it's an opportunity to see who understands me yeah and like whether or not I'm right yeah. if everyone just said no yeah you wouldn't have a business yeah. so like to, to keep the show on the road and to yeah. keep the expansion you know exploding obviously you need to fund it but yeah. like my part of what I love doing is getting people to agree with you in essence you know and they jump on board and you've got new partners yeah um, but you know, when you're given a really short amount of time to do something, you can't take someone on that journey because there's, there's too much kind of DD to do, yeah. you know, like nobody's just going to be like, Oh sweet. Someone's dropped out. So I'll jump in. Like they've got all the same questions that they want to ask yeah. <laughs> themselves. So it was a tricky one. I got through it. I won't say how, but I did. I'll you, tell you later. You can tell me how. No, 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 no. I've already, did I, you have I, to take I, your clothes I, off? I, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, rumbled. <laughs> Um, I, I, I feel I, yeah. straight down a strip club. Yeah, exactly. she have got twenty four hours. Who uh, wants it? Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like um, my partners would kill me if they heard this. But I, I like having open and honest discussions about yeah. the way things are going. I think it makes everything more kind of relatable in a sense. And, and you know, I, I honestly believe that anyone with like a, a serious vision who, who's able to sell, I, I think anyone can start. You know, a dream business. Honestly, I, I, yeah. it's, it's not. You know, fortunately, I've had a lot of, of good advice. But yeah. you know, just also, what, whatever you do, just don't do a Molly May on me, right? Yeah, no. Don't I, start her, talking her about twenty four hours. You like it felt like you're about to say something. I'm not going to let that happen. No, no. Firstly, everyone's got the same ne- twenty four hours. I was never ever. I would never go down that road, and I feel I actually feel a bit sorry for having said that because I, I kind of I, I kind of know like what she means but i certainly wouldn't say it in although you uh, could position. say something really funny and then connor can just edit it up <laughs> and we can just like absolutely <laughs> and at the end just put clean co <laughs> be the best viral ad ever what that we ha- we all have the same 24 hours <laughs> yeah. clean, at clean co yeah drink clean co <sighs> we all have the same amount of time in a day if only that was like advertising something that would have been the best thing for 2022 yeah yeah um yeah, no, I kind of, I, I kind of steer well clear of all gossip, but I, I, I heard about this because everyone's talking about it. Yeah, my girlfriend like kept yeah. just, I just see her laughing on the phone. <laughs> what, what are you doing? She's like, oh, another meme. I was like, oh god, is that the Love Island girl? I, yeah. I don't watch it, but, no, um, um, but no, um, going back to um, what we we're talking about, because, <laughs> um, yeah, that was quite a funny meme. I, I did watch one. I'm, yeah, I can't stop thinking about it now. I'm trying what to is it? Up. What are we talking about now? The 24 hours. Oh, right. So, so, so but what, what you were saying is so a friend of mine when I was 20 said to me, he goes, money isn't any good if you can't share it with people. Yeah. And um, like I understand that. There's no point having loads of money and then you've got no one around you. Mm. What you were talking about with your journey for your business, it's an idea and you've gone with it and you've raised loads of money. Sharing the whole story of it yeah. is part of the fun and it's part of, you know. But I, but I almost think like, on, honestly, you know, not to talk, I feel like I've done, you know, quite well recently. Sobriety's definitely helped me with have a clear head and an understanding of kind of, you know, how to do things. But three years ago, I was a blank canvas. Blank, like, you know, between TV jobs, wonder what show I'll do next, yeah. you know, like out day drinking with my mates in inverted commas, you know, all of whom do nothing, you know, <laughs> I, 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 and it's kind of like, you know, this was a real, like sobriety for me was a real wake up call, like, oh shit, you know, I'm actually not really achieving anything and like, who could I become? That's what my thing was about. But like, yeah, I, I just think 
that there's so many and maybe it's just me who knew nothing maybe a lot of people know a lot more than i knew then but it's like there's there's some quite good like simple things that you can know which you clearly know right you're a businessman but like it would be fun wouldn't it to kind of document how to like how to start your startup yeah because like if you say to someone like i've got a really great idea for a you know for a juice bar like you know well how, how are you going to start it most people don't really know no you know like everyone's got to make it you know and i feel like well we could do something together i feel i feel i feel like you know there, there, there's a there would be a good five to ten step thing that you could quite easily teach someone how to start you know a business or at least get it going yeah well, um, I mean, I'm sure these kind of things already exist. <laughs> yeah, oh, God knows. Yeah, there's but, loads of them, aren't there? But Mostly yeah, American I mean? people. Like, I, I always think about it because I, I often wish that, you know, obviously this journey in particular with Cleanco has been particularly fun because of the rate of growth and, you know, how well it's doing and stuff. But but actually, it would have been really fun to have documented the whole thing. Yeah. Because I, I, actually, it's it's... I don't know, it's just so different. Is it, well, I mean, I totally know what you mean because I've got a company called Amica Fitness with my friend John and we, we've we been friends since we were 10 in school and then he was a cop for 20 years. and then A cop? A copper, yeah. yeah. He was a copper. Um, or anti-terrorism, like full on, you know, like Jack used Bauer. to go in. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and, um, and so we've got this company now, um, but like we're documenting the journey of it and we're doing a big event in Ibiza this year, hopefully, fitness festival. Which I'll be coming to. Sponsored by Clinko. Absolutely it is. You heard it here first. Um, well, that actually, that actually could work. But Let's anyway, do it. Um, but so, you know, we're documenting the journey. Yeah. And we are doing it. And for any, if anything, it's like when we're in 20 years time, you know, when we're like 60. Yeah. We can look back and, you know, look at that and, you know, just laugh basically yeah. and have a laugh. The other thing is, is you talk about the idea, right? You know, you're saying about you being naive. Have you seen Inception? Yeah where they install an idea into someone and a pure idea, like you can't let go. Like it reminds me of Inception, what your journey is. Cause you had this idea, you were naive. You had to raise like millions of quid. Yeah. Um, and like now look where it is now. It's amazing. Like, and that, that's the thing when someone has like a pure idea, it's a bit like when I started Modball back in the day, like yeah. I had a 10 year, I, I, in, it, I was like, I know where I want to be in 10 years. No one understood what I was talking about because it was almost like trying to explain a dream yeah. to someone. And <laughs> they're like, you're what? You're like, like it's making really, sandcastles with your, your fucking landlord. But it's so yeah. exciting though. Yeah. Like I, I absolutely, to you, I absolutely right? love it. No, but not, no, it's clean co aside. Yeah. I love an audacious goal that's like ridiculous. Yeah. And I love people who just can't, be deterred they're like they're like mumpsimuses do you know what a mumpsimus is no i interviewed susie dent from countdown <laughs> and she taught me two new words <laughs> okay. one was one was a mumpsimus what's that a mumpsimus is when somebody feels that they're always right but to the point where when they're proven wrong they still can't tell that they're wrong okay so like you can literally be like mumpsimus you can literally say like i th- i think covid is a hoax yeah and you can say well, it's not a hoax because here are millions of people who have died from COVID. And you get it. I, 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 and this is ov- obviously not doctored. Like, it's real. And they'll yeah. just go, no, 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 it's a hoax. They're a mumpsimus. They just don't, they, they just think, they think okay. they're right. Like, I, or like, you know, take it, take it away from COVID. Just anything, this, this, this bottle is green. Like, no, it's not, mate, it's red. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's clearly green. No, it's red. Like, okay, fine, you're a mumpsimus. Yeah. Okay, and then there's being cran basled. Cran. Cran. It's either cran or cram. cram. Basled. Okay. I think it would probably be cran, cran basled. Cran basled. To be cran basled is when, like, you know when somebody's drank alcohol to excess? Yeah. And, like, basically me throughout my 20s. And, and like, you're, you just don't quite look right. Yeah? You like, your, your eyes are a bit red and you've got, you know, lines on your forehead when you shouldn't really. And you've got slightly black eyes and you just look a bit beaten up. Yeah. Yeah? Cran basled. Right, cran basil. Why, 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 did, why did she say mumpsimus to you? Were you saying something to her? No, no, no. I wasn't accused of being a mumpsimus. Oh, okay, fine. I, I was just... And it, cran it's kind of, it's, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you look like a cran basil <laughs> mumpsimus. Try using it in, in one sentence. There you go. Um, but no, I enjoyed talking to her. She was great. You should get her on here. She was fantastic. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. okay fine. Um, yeah. What um, was it? What were we talking about before? I don't know. Connor, what were we talking about? Uh, God, no one even knows. Oh yeah, yeah. So the idea yeah. thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so just the I, yeah, and also I believe that just because you like 
because people ask me a lot about what they should do, business and advice. And I'm like, just because I was successful at one company, yeah. it doesn't mean I'll be successful at another. Yeah. Anyone, all that you see, all those like programs, ah, oh, buy my 10 steps to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You can't apply that to other stuff. Yeah. You know, because the timing 10 years ago, 14 years ago was different to now. Every, it all has to come together. At the same, like your clean co thing, yeah. if you'd have come up with that six years ago, wouldn't be, it wouldn't have wouldn't gone have worked right yeah so this is why i think you know if you've got a pure idea and it, the time that you, you're you become obsessed with it no one gets it yeah right but you become obsessed with it you know then yeah i think definitely document it yeah um but yeah all these people that go uh, you, there's no because there, there's no steps right you, the thing is if i set up clean co i couldn't have done it the way you did it because first of all i don't live in the same building as that woman yeah right <laughs> Like that yeah. makes a difference. Well, yeah. just just in passing, we were smashing it before the arrival of Ursula. But that helped. But no, it was a step change. Yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah. that was the that was like before that yeah. we were looking at the states as right. We're going to dip our toe into LA. And we're going to get a listing and we're going to do bits and bobs. And, and and her guys were like, no, you're not. We're going to launch in LA, you know, and seven other states. Yeah, all um, at once. If this is what I think, you've got to document it because if you'd have made a little video going, you're not going, you're not going to believe what I'm about to do. I'm about to go upstairs. Yeah, and have a chat with and have a chat with some lady that yeah. I've googled. Yeah, yeah, and it I'm would going have been to try great. And say, it, it, honestly, it would have been the best thing ever. So yeah. you should just do it from now. Yeah, I know, but I keep thinking this, but then I just don't do it. Just do it. I should do it. You just, just do it. I struggle with Instagram even. Like, do you know what I mean? I just like, look at you and your setup and your pod setup. Like, yeah. you know, you're a podcaster. You know, I have two quite successful podcasts, but like, I'm not a podcaster like you. Look, I'm like, not. I don't a, have one, I'm I don't not have one of these bionic arms in my house. Yeah, no. I mean, look <laughs> at that. Far. I hold my microphone. It's, like, you know? it's not. You I'm, know. I'm like a oh, news you? reporter from the fifties. Oh yeah, okay. It's a bit more professional. Then. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I'd prefer but, to miss. You know, when you're talking about like these big ideas, yeah. and like, I'd rather have ludicrously like audacious goals yeah. and miss them yeah than to achieve my average goals well it's a funnier story isn't it no matter what happens yeah positive or negative it's going to be a good well, it's always story. more positive isn't it because like even if you make like even if your your target for the year is like just outrageous yeah and you and you miss it it's yeah. like you might have some explaining to do but the business still grew by 300 percent. so it's not that big a deal you know like it's yeah. kind of unless it was your own money and you go bankrupt then it's bit shit yeah, well, they, just listen like, to Molly. Just a video of you, and they're like taking your house keys. You're like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to stop documenting uh, this now. It's all getting a bit. It's all getting a bit personal. The tenth step. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, uh, <laughs> suicide. No, um, what was I going to say? So, yeah. What else were we going to talk about? I had. Oh yeah, just just a quickie. Um, have you? Are you doing any um, anything with NFTs? NFTs. Yeah. Actually, I, I just did a video. <laughs> That came out today where I compared NFTs to Fire Festival. Can you yeah. remember Fire Festival? I, I lo- yeah. That uh, guy did document that. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, and, and he wishes he didn't, right? Imagine. Well, he's in jail. Never, exactly. But imagine if he hadn't documented it. I mean, I mean. You'd be all right. We wouldn't have got a great Netflix documentary out of it. Fabulous documentary. The I actually saw Ja Rule at the airport the other day. Did you? Yeah, I saw him and I thought, that guy doesn't add a throw festival. <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought I wouldn't want to go to his festival Clean festival Yeah well mate you see all of these things we, We've got a partnership now with United Airlines Okay We're the, fir- we're the first non alc sponsor of the Grammys You oh, like really? the Grammys? They've been moved to April it's Supposed to be on the 31st of Jan Really annoying Oh Yeah so I guess we'll just go then instead um, Plus one? You inviting me? Uh, well, I'll just have to check uh, who else we've allocated tickets to? <laughs> you can come to the after party. Oh yeah, <laughs> straight out the window. <laughs> um, I'm sure we can it. figure something out. When is it? May. Uh, it's April, early April now. April. Apparently, I but it's it, moved because of COVID. So what day? I put it in my diary. I don't know when it is. It's early April. They said they're okay. moving it. It was the 31st of Jan, but it's not anymore. Um, okay, cool. I could wear one of those things where it's where it says like um, tax are rich. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like you've bl- blown over the NFT thing. Okay. What's you want, your view of it? You you said you want to talk about NFTs before, right? So I know you want to talk about it. But I think they're mostly a scam. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think of cryptocurrency? Well, yeah, I love it. Well, I love Bitcoin. I think most 
cryptos are, are just absolutely useless and won't be around. If you look, well, at hang on. So it, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is basically like kind of um, like Bit- Bitcoin. It's, it's Bitcoin. like electronic gold, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. And yeah. then you've got Ethereum, which is like an electronic company, uh, currency. Sorry. And then the rest are kind of like neither here nor there, are they? Yeah, they're all whatever. Are really. they? Yeah. Yeah, pump and dumps mostly. There you go, pump and dumps. In Crikey. my opinion, yeah. God, don't let them hear you say that. NFTs are the same. All right. <laughs> well, um, so what, do, okay, so tell me what you know about NFTs. Because well, you, uh, you said it's a limited, obviously. I see a bunch yeah. of apes online selling yeah. for millions of pounds. Uh, and mm-hmm. I think, well, Jesus, you know, my mum's an artist. Yeah. You know, we can knock up a few in the living room. Yeah. And so, so I think people with vast followings have really unfair advantages on this type of thing. You know, Logan Paul comes, a, like, looks like a fucking genius. Whereas actually, if he just buys any of these things and like posts it, it immediately, you know, goes 100x because everyone, what, because he's so followed. It's, it's, an, it's unfair is what I'm saying. I've got and, a the, and, the, and there's a degree of jealousy. Yeah, but did you just screenshot that? No, that's got my logo on it. What do you mean it's got your logo on it? So how what so did you just mint that? Do you like the way I know the word mint? <laughs> did, no, I photoshopped it. Right. Yeah, so so yeah. It's fake. Well there you go. Completely fake. Yeah, but okay, so you're one of these people. So so listen, I I'm not I'm not an advocate for any of it. I just find it interesting. So like I like to discuss UFOs and NFTs and crypto and all this stuff. It's it's healthy debate. Okay. But so that is not a real ape. How do you know? Well, because you've, well, firstly, you've, you've disfigured it and put and your logo on it. Until I photoshopped it, you wouldn't have known. Yeah, but you don't have anything. It's not in a, it's not in a crypto wallet. I, that that so, could be in a crypto wallet if I wanted. No, but say, okay, if I walk into the Louvre. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I take. Is that what NFTs are now? No. But they, they so might end up there. No, but if I took a photo of the Mona Lisa. Yeah. To the point where it was perfect, this, and, then, and then I, and then I printed it off and put it in my living. Or even if I got a silk screen yeah, of yeah. the Mona Lisa and I put it in my living room, it's not the Mona Lisa. That there, my friends, is a knockoff. Yeah. Okay. Fine. But the Mona Lisa, yeah. right? Yeah, it's worth something, right? It attracts millions of people to watch, l- look at it every single like year. Yeah. Not in the last two years. <laughs> Um, <coughs> NFT would have done way better. No, <coughs> no, but okay. So it's actually quite the, a good idea for an NFT. Well, the, okay. Why don't we create an ape that's dressed like the Mona Lisa? Yeah. Yeah. And then what? Call so, it like broken out of the Louvre for the day. Yeah. Yeah. And then what? How is it valuable? It's like, well, you're asking someone who, who, who has no idea. I was hoping you would know. But the thing okay. is, it's valuable because it's like owning anything. It's an asset. It's like, you know, you like, you like my watch. I happen to own that physically. But if this watch was held digitally. I like, right, your watch is fine. I like that they get so much money for them. I think it's hilarious. What, the NFTs? No, you're, the price that those watches are. But they're worth a shit ton more secondhand. Why do you think I buy them? Yeah, so why, why do you think that? It's not that I think, that's where the market is. Yeah, no, no, but years. why is that then, right? Because the demand supersedes the supply. Okay, so talking about board apes, there's 10,000. Yeah. How many of those watches are there? Of this particular model? Yeah. Not many. Exactly, what, like maybe 10? No, more than that. It's not limited. So there'll be there'll be a couple of thousand worldwide. Okay. The thing the thing is with NFTs is that here's how here's how it works, right? So you know my board eight that I showed you. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Let me find it because I I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. I do find it funny though, but you must you must you must get it. Yeah. So it's say blowing, this blowing chewing gum though. Say yeah, I got a pink one as well. You know, God, just yeah. in case, I got two million right? dollars right there. The, th- the thing is with a, the thing is with a board <laughs> ape, right? Is that why why is it valuable? Because everyone's talking about it. Yeah, it's right. the same as anything else. Yeah, but here's I, the, I'm not. Here, by the way, I'm not. I'm. I'm. So here's here's how it works. Your right? view, right, is me two days ago. Okay, so what have you heard about NFTs? They sell for millions of dollars. Yeah, but do they? What proof have you got? Right, and here's the problem: I can create an NFT. It doesn't have to be a board ape. Yeah. I can create this, yeah. yeah. I can have two Ethereum wallets, yeah, right, and sell it to each other. I sell them, sell it to myself. That's what I was going to do for a hundred grand. That's what I was going to do, right? Shh, don't tell everyone, mate. But everyone knows this. No, mate. Right, we, we're special. No. Yes. So here's what I do, right? <laughs> is I sell it to myself for hundred grand, and then 
on the blockchain. Yeah, yeah, it'll pick up value. No, it shows that it has a value because someone sold it yeah. for that amount of money. But really, I just sold it to myself. It doesn't cost me anything apart from a, a fee yeah. because I've sent the Ethereum to my other wallet. Yeah. So it's not like it's cost anything. Yeah. Right. So, no, this is- and then also, and then what? The other thing I can do is I can go and put a story online going. I've made a hundred grand out of NFTs. And no, all no, of a sudden... I, I, un- I understand that most of the mugs who are claiming they're making millions of NFTs obviously aren't. But like, there does exist a market for NFTs, right? Like that OpenSea app is not fake. No. OpenSea like did 13 trillion, sorry, 13 billion dollars of sales or something like that. But last did year. they? Or was it, was it people transferring Ethereum to themselves? But they are raising like significant amount of funds. So I would, I would have thought that they are able to, to show. Yeah, but okay, I'm just talking about legitimacy. Yeah. Right? Whether it's a website and it trades board Apes and that kind of stuff. Like if you, go on board, if you go on their website and you look at all the listings for board Apes. Yeah. I, I went on there, I've researched this video a lot. And a lot of the people bidding on these Apes are the same accounts. And they're offering like $800. Right, yeah. so that all the stories and the PR stories that you hear, right? I don't think any of them are genuine. I don't think any. There's a guy who said, "Oh, I sold my board ape for three grand instead of three hundred grand." Was he avoiding tax? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. No, but it's like uh, it could be. Well, yeah. Look, I, I've got this, no, I, all. All I am, by the way, I'm not an advocate for NFTs. I, I know I, you're not. I, I'm I, trying to save you getting scammed. No, no, no. I've got, mate, do you honestly think I'm going to go onto OpenSea and buy a fucking board ape? Like, Probably. Like, no, mate. <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of ways. I'm thinking of ways to to create to mint yeah. NFTs yeah. And, and and do and, and use them for kind of marketing with Clinko. So yeah. give them to some people who are preferred clients, like. If you buy some, you know, perhaps they'll get a bottle of Clinko every month till the day we sell, like for a certain kind of, of, of thing. You know, this ape or bear or whatever gives you access to all Clinko events. If we do Formula One in Miami next year, if you buy this NFT, you can have a VIP pass to the whole day. That makes sense. And that's because it's a, it's a marketing thing, right? Yeah, but what you're doing is you're creating loads of NFTs to make money, not you in general. Yeah. And then you're going, oh, fuck. What how, should we do? How do we make this valuable? <laughs> Because really, it's just a fucking JPEG no one gives a shit about. That's the reality of it, right? So everyone's like, oh, how can I get on this hype train, right? Yeah. Because even um, I d- I don't, I don't, these people that go, oh, yeah, our NFTs are selling for hundreds of thousands, and then they go, well, 99% of them are, are worthless. So what well, happens, and then, is it, is it and, regulated at all? No, so like, what happens, say I mint a, a, a clean co bear, yeah? Yeah. And then I sell it to you for five grand and then you sell it to me for 10 grand and then I sell it to you for 15 grand and we do that back and forth for a bit and then why would that happen though no because because then because my understanding is then it would pick up like some kind of steam on OpenSea like that that trading capacity gives it a boost and then if somebody who we don't know bought it then they've bought it I don't I mean I don't get it I don't think anyone gets it do they well I don't I don't believe it it, it, someone said that there's a story of someone that bought a board eight. Was it three million? If that guy calls me, shows me <laughs> the history, yeah, like I genuinely think, shows me the history of the money off some other dude, yeah, yeah or lady, whatever, and that I genuinely see that, then I'll believe it. But it's a bit like UFOs. So you, so you think nobody has spent significant money on a board ape? I definitely right. I could. I almost guarantee you Eminem didn't spend a million dollars on a board ape. If there's 10,000, say you had board apes yeah. and there's 10,000, you'd give 500 away to celebs, right? And be like, look, if you all hype this shit, then the others are worth everyone, more and I'll cut you in on it. Yeah. Well, no, you'll, you'll have your board ape. It's probably worth 200 grand, right? If everyone hypes up this shit. So that's what you would do as a marketing plan. Yeah, right? of course. Do you think Eminem's going to like spend a million dollars on a, on a, a JPEG? <laughs> Like, uh, but this is why it's so interesting, right? It is, but it's interesting because only because you hear stories that they're selling for like millions, right? But are they? Well, you go, you go on open. Well, I have to li- listen they're, they're again. It's for it looks, sale, it, and no again, one's buying them. Again, it looks like I'm on the other side of the of the fence to you, and I'm not. I, yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm just interested in understanding it because so, I feel like I missed crypto. Okay. I have like some Bitcoin, I have some Ethereum and stuff, yeah. but like, do I wish I'd bought it four years ago? Like, yeah. So here's the thing, because what you said was, you know, you're like, 
buy this JPEG, yeah, and then you get clean coat alcohol once a month, right? Yeah. Blah, 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 right? So you're cr- trying to create value out of JPEG. And it's like Bored Apes is that you get to go to this yacht party, right? Or something. It's a Bored Ape yacht club. You go to a yacht. Eminem and that aren't going to these parties. That You can pay them to go to a, sit on a yacht with a bunch of people. <laughs> they, they just don't do it. If you... <laughs> If you like, this is what I'm saying, and also like, but isn't the point that everyone on that yacht party has spent like a million dollars on a ball uh, on this thing? So it's kind of like, but imagine, you're surrounded imagine, by imagine, other people that like JPEGs. Yeah, but if <laughs> if they did, right, right. But the thing is, imagine you go to the yacht party, you spent a million dollars, and there's fuckle people there. No, and everyone else hasn't spent a million. You're the mug. It's like being at a Halloween party. Like it's like you the know, night, it's like the the dream where you, or the nightmare where you go to school with your pants off or whatever. Yeah. You're like the only, and you're like, how much do you pay for yours? I, oh, I got, I, for I got mine g- given to me, mate. Yeah, I did a Twitter post. Yeah, and I got I got eight of them. Yeah, what? <laughs> I spent all my money on it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, I spent all my money on it. And also, right, so you get to go to the yacht party, yeah. right? So you turn up. Whose with, yacht is it? I don't know, but they can't fit ten thousand people on the yacht. We all know that. So you turn up to so you turn up to it and go, hey. I'm in the club. This is my ape. Yeah, and if you if that's what you need to get onto the yacht party, <laughs> why don't you buy a ticket? <laughs> why do you need like a board ape? Why don't you buy a ticket? Or reality is, you partied for years. I'm not even yeah? gonna go in. And you're famous. The Web you, three. You wouldn't even be needed. You'd have just been like, yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, you, like we're friends. You get in the party. Yeah, it's such a load of rubbish. Yeah, I, I, it's if, more of a digital club, though, is it not? It's like you've got people saying that soon, like, people are going to be so upset with their lives that they're just going to live in a virtual world. Do you think that's going to happen? No, mate. No one's anywhere near strapping if some shit to their face and, like, wandering well, around in I, yeah. virtual reality. <laughs> Getting, you just get dizzy with that thing on anyway. It would be annoying. Yeah, and I can understand why, it, like, if you're unhappy with your life, you could make yourself an avatar that was infinitely better than you. But yeah. I don't think you'd want to live there. No, and, and if there's... Anywhere where you're going to bump into Mark Zuckerberg, fuck that. I'm not doing that. I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Imagine your kids like, walking around, like, bumping into stuff. No, no, no. Like, you know, they get, they get you know, half an hour of TV. That's yeah. it. You know, they're not living in a virtual world. Not yet. No, not yet. What do you think of the metaverse? Well, it's all the same, isn't it? It's like, I don't know. That's what, are we not talking about that? Is that Web3 that I was on? It's all very confusing to me. I'm 33 years old, mate. Do you know what, right? Talk about Web3. Do you want to talk about Web3? I know nothing about it. Should we go back to stuff that I know about? Can do. Okay. It's interesting, though. This, this stuff is like... No, le- I know. Well, legit. It, like, what the, I, I read this article, actually. Um, Jack Dorsey shared it on Twitter yeah. a few days ago. Um, and it was, a, it was like some tech guy talking about Web3. And how it's like doesn't make, really make much sense because the problem is that, is that it, it went from decentralized to centralized. Yeah, Web two is centralized like Facebook, and then they want Web three like what it is now, but decentralized. But the problem is is that you no one wants to use their own server, right? So if you create some massive Facebook thing, you know whatever you're not going to use your own server. And that's the problem with it. And that's why Web2 was so big and is so big is because people don't want to use their own servers and they don't want to deal with all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So ultimately, Web3 is just not realistic. You listen to Joe Rogan, don't you? Yeah. Well, not, well, who all, was not he all ta- of them. Who, who was he talking to when he was talking about that American company that was basically like a massive barn? And you go and it's like you, you, you shoot zombies and stuff. What? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't no, know. It's apparently there's this company. It sounds awesome. He says he's like completely addicted. He goes with his whole family. And it lasts an hour and you get like fully suited up. Yeah. And like they, they unleash you in like some warehouse. Yeah. Where like you, you couldn't possibly bump into anything because it's just like vast. Yeah. And, and like you play all these games. So like you get given a, a gun and you shoot like zombies. Apparently it's like so real. <laughs> That, it, that it's like wait we were talking about web 3 how, the, how well, do we all, transition this, this is all the same this is all, <laughs> to me this is all the same <laughs> it's all the are same are you trying to talk about something that you know I just I, <laughs> mate, John zombies wait we're, we're talking about web 3 and people's servers and stuff I could see you drifting I, I actually just I glazed see, over you almost wanted to drink again didn't you yeah yeah <laughs> I was thinking I'm going to break my sobriety for this it is interesting though yeah yeah no the whole thing is really interesting but you're going to create an NFT. 
Well, or you're thinking about it because you missed not, the crypto. Not with, not with any like, not with any real view to like make money from it. Just as like an yeah. interesting way of marketing. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, it's like it's like creating um, it's like creating a solution for a problem that doesn't exist. Like you're creating NFTs and then going, what do I what do I do with them? Like, because it's cool. <laughs> yeah, but like, you could kind of say that about most things. So you could be like, I'm doing NFTs now, guys. Ooh. Yeah, but you could easily say that about collect. you know, like not to go too off piece, but, you know, again, back to the watches or, yeah, like, but they're physical, or cars, you know, right? there's no, what's the point in buying a Ferrari when you could own a Prius, you could argue. Okay, but the thing is, engineering's different. Like your watch, you know, for, for them to make that watch. Yeah. Like, it's not that easy. No. Right? Otherwise, everyone would do it. The yeah. thing is with NFTs, you can download an app now, it'll create you a thousand NFTs. Yeah. There's no... Again, I really feel like we've kind of jumped into NFTs. Obviously, it was my fault. I brought it up. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind I, of like... it's. It, I, find, I just find it interesting. I find any market where it looks as though millions of quid are exchanging hands like all day long. It's kind of just like, well, what, what can they see that I don't? Well, you know, it's like anything that happens overnight can go overnight right mm. and that's the thing like what i don't want is that i weirdly i don't have that many followers but um you so saying many that's scam, weird no scam scam accounts that uh, use my name and images messaging people to scam people the problem with nfts is that i just don't want people to get scammed yeah and that happens and that is happening everywhere yeah because people fomo into it right they go fuck i'm missing out on what NFT, they probably, most of them probably don't even know what a non-fungible token means. You know, yeah. can't actually come. Well, it's so, quite a difficult thing. Like, you know, if you try explaining what a non-fungible token means, even if you know that it stands for non-fungible token, it's still hard to explain. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> so, people FOMO into it, right? Yeah. That's the problem. And that's where people get scammed. You know? Yeah. It, you can remember back in the old days where you'd, you'd be in like a center of somewhere, like a shopping village or whatever. And then there's these guys that have took over this empty store and they're selling bags of stuff <laughs> for like for like a tenner. And you'd be like, oh my God, it's going to have like five grand worth of stuff in. And they're like, here you go. And then you yeah. get home and it's like a, a dog biscuit. But, no. you know, the way they sold it, the way they hyped it all up was like, oh, it's going to have a, like a <laughs> six stereo, blah, blah, blah. That's what? what that's what reminds me. So for me, I, I'm like, just everyone be careful. What's next on the agenda for you? Are you doing anything sporty? No, I'm doing NFTs. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> sporty? No. Yeah. Um, so does that answer your question about NFTs? You did want to. Men- you didn't want to talk about it. I'm I mean, sorry we to. We were talking like- about it for like nearly half an hour. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry but to it was be lovely. negative. It was very. It was very enjoyable. Sorry to be negative. I'm going to put all my plans on ice now. Yeah. Is that a clean co joke? No, no, drinks? no. Oh, the okay. pun wasn't intended. <laughs> Um, Are you still doing jiu-jitsu? Yeah, I love jiu-jitsu. Well, I kind of, I injured my shoulder, boo-hoo. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I, I got held by this black belt. And like, it was actually, it was quite embarrassing. It was, it was like the class demo, you know? Yeah. Like, like the guy literally was like, I'll, I'll show you how to do this move in front of the class. And, um, and he pulled me up and he basically wrapped, he told me to like grab round, like grab his like midriff basically like mm-hmm. I was trying to pull him down to the ground and then he basically locked both my arms like in that position so that my arms were out straight and then just fucking tripped me up and like just made me fall over and all of the weight of my body just like crashed down onto my shoulder and actually at the time I knew that there was a problem with it but obviously I couldn't make a scene because I was the like crash test dummy in, in the class <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was lying on the floor going, oh my God, like, you know, it, it kind of like jolted out of its socket a bit. And then, um, yeah, like I, I, I nearly was just like, mate, can you, and, and then he, he was, yeah, like I left and I, I had a scan like months later because it wasn't quite yeah. the same. And yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's a real mess in there. So I haven't been recently, but. I hope, that answer, I hope that answers your, you your question. In other words, yeah, I love jujitsu still. But I've had a, yeah, you I, didn't, I had a mare. Did you dislocate it? it? It jumped out and then came back in, but it kind of caused, I mean, now we're really just, it, it, it just, yeah, the ligaments are all kind of skew if. Uh. Yeah, no good. But anyway, yeah, jiu-jitsu is still a great sport. Yeah. You got mugged this morning, didn't you? Oh God, let's that's, not go into that. Uh, that's, that's a real low one. <laughs> 
Connor got right. Connor got Connor did get his phone nicked out of his hand this morning. No. Welcome to London. Shithole. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's quite nice, but it's um, all right. Just uh, don't walk around with your phone like this, basically. Yeah. Or sit there with it. No. Yeah. Jiu Jitsu, mate. That would have that would have saved you there. Well, they they're pretty fast. Well, I don't know. Was well, just going to roll around until you get him. Rear naked choke the guy. He'll be he'll <laughs> be, be be he'll be begging to give your phone back. <laughs> he'll literally be yeah. You do feel you feel you feel more powerful. This is you know this is why I don't wear watches. Right. Because you can. I don't want to get mugged. Yeah, I, I wear if I'm ever wearing something. Not I. I wore this because I know I thought you liked watches. No. Well, I mean, I, I, you mentioned well, I my watch last are, time. It's because you wear nice watches. Well, yeah, I collect watches. I love watches. There you go. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll kick the shit out of them. You're jiu jitsu. Well, no, I'm not sure about that, but it certainly helps for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Not that I get into kind of street altercations on but a daily basis. And it's not like you wear a watch everywhere, is it? Well, I do, I do, yeah. But I'll, 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 I'll wear a sleeve. Like I wouldn't Tone walk down. down the street with like a what, like hey. a bear, yeah, oi, oi, <laughs> with like a bare, you know, wrist. Yeah, I'm quite careful. You hear all sorts of shocking stories, especially West London. Apparently, someone in like Berkeley Square had the back of his arm like slit, like with a knife, just so that he wouldn't be able to like move his arm. To the, it's all crazy. What? At most people, you could walk up to them yeah. with like any kind of, you know accessory and just be like give me a watch and most people shit themselves and just give it to you so all this slitting of the arm stuff is you know that's just a bit it, much well it's excessive you know why yeah. don't they just ask him first yeah slit later yeah, yeah. Um, a friend, my friend Simon actually he got um, he got mugged a year ago for, for this thing that was again done. again no no Hi. not Connor not Connor my friend Simon Simon I see Yeah. and someone stole his phone and he shouted at them something yeah. and they turned around and robbed him of his wallet <laughs> They went back. <laughs> he said something and annoyed them. So they went back and took all his stuff. <laughs> he was like, I'm not doing that again. No. Yeah. No, next time I'll be... It's um, not funny. I'll, I'll I just be laughing. Next time I'll just be really appreciative that they took everything. <laughs> um, um, so what else is new? I'm going to get my notes out again. Yeah. So just instead of the Bored Ape um, that I, I... You can yeah. buy that one. It's like 20K. Thanks. Not even, a, not even a problem. Perfect. Well, we'll sell it to each other and then list it on OpenSea with all its recent activity. Open sea. Here's yeah. the other thing: um, is that apparently, like, someone stole some apes or something. Yeah. So what they did from they, the database. I don't know how, what happened. Some article. So what Open Sea did, they blocked them from selling them. That's how centralized it is. It's not decentralized. That's the other problem. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. After this conversation, I'm never going to look into it ever again. Have I really ruined it for you? I'm over it, mate. To really? be honest, I agree with you. I like two two days ago. I I I, I was thinking. Well, surely this has to be bollocks. And then, like, I was like, okay, I'm not going to take that view. I'm going to take a, a, a more, I'm going to approach this with a more open mind. Yeah. Um, and I did, that's all. But don't worry, if I'll go back into being a... My video on NFTs today... I'm going to watch it. Um, I said, if Dan Bilzerian yeah. created an NFT and you got to go to his parties, yeah. people would buy it. Yeah. But the problem is, why wouldn't you just buy a ticket? You know what I mean? Like so, but like does he, does he do tickets? Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, like, but you get no because the ticket doesn't then potentially appreciate in value. Yeah, but you only get to go to the parties, so it's the same value, isn't it? Yeah, but and like how it's many like parties the, you but the, have? But the, but the, like for no, hundred but, years? Like, no, but that's just that that it's pitched as the party is the icing on the cake. The cake is the value in the art of the NFT, which is ridiculous to you. And yeah. most people. But like, yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, I think that the, the, uh, there's an idea, yeah. right? I get the idea of it. It's how it bridges to like actual value, yeah. you know, without people lying about buying their own stuff. Because you can literally buy your own NFTs off yourself to yeah. hype up the value. Yeah. That's well, the that, problem with it. That was like my master plan. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> It, it honestly was <laughs> just buy them off yourself yeah no so i was going to mint some nfts yeah. like buy them and sell them to myself and my mates until like the value is massive yeah but none of us have lost any money because it's just stayed in our pot yeah and then just be like this thing's worth you know 200 grand yeah get involved but qu get, in, get involved while stocks last <laughs> quick and then we mint quick, another 10 quick because i definitely can't mint anymore yeah 
Yeah. Literally. No, but so, yeah, that's the other thing. That That's the thing that annoys me. It's like, you can obviously just make more. It's, that's the thing. All the money that's being made, is it all being made out of FOMO? Yeah. And once that, once people go, oh, hold on a minute. I, they, but so can they, you crystallize it though? That's the thing. So say, say you've got like 250 million quids worth of Ethereum because you've done so well trading your apes. Like, who's going to give you that cash? How do you get it out of your wallet? You sell the, sell the crypto into the USD. What bank is going to do that? No, you use BlockFi, something like that. Right. Oh, you just send your Ethereum to your BlockFi account and then you just sell it for your Surely USDC. someone must have figured out how to just like appear to have shitloads of Ethereum in, in your wallet. What do you mean? Well, obviously that would, you know, like, can't they just defraud this the system because it's all online? Not that I would do that, but like, you know. <laughs> no. Because no. there's no physical cash anywhere. I just, I find the whole thing odd, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're confusing me. That's how confusing Yeah, but it's you crazy are. though. If I, so say, say, well, you, say you and I were ludicrously like successful to the point where we could sell NFTs to each other for like tens of millions. Yeah. What is that? It's like a car going past, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah. So, so say, wait, wait. say we were so successful that we can like. Well, just say we had 10 million dollars worth of ether, ethereum together yeah yeah okay so we're, we're at a level yeah so so who has it we well you've got 10 million i've got 10 million okay yeah in our wallets yeah yeah in our let's start from there go trunk. on carry on Tr is it trust trunk like, there's so many new words ledger just say ledger ledger yeah um okay i create like call it 10 nfts yeah yeah and you want to buy them and you buy them for like a million each yeah <laughs> that's 10 million because that's okay, what you buy them, yeah, yeah and then and then i buy them back and we just trade them amongst ourselves but that activity yeah. looks as though yeah. like on like because these things are registered are they not into like some is it a fucking well, blockchain What's yeah there's called? a transaction history yeah so that transaction history which is a look, lie because we've just basically lied yes yeah. but, but say there's more than just you and me say yeah. we have 20 of us and it just it trickles through <laughs> yeah you know and there's no real way of knowing that we're all intrinsically linked yeah. someone first coming across that nft will go oh this has been traded 18 times yeah you know and, and it's going to have a clear pattern of you know this thing's Going worth up in value, yeah. yeah yeah of this thing's yeah. worth a million yeah and we'd we'd up it each time a little bit mm -hmm. like and some mad yeah. collector might just want it well it only takes one person to buy it and then you're done and yeah. you make money exactly and that's the problem but that person is the one that's going to get scammed right because there is, it's not a value you've just like people have just lied about the value and that's what's scary about it you know, it's a, it's like a lot of a that, lot guy, of that guy's gonna have a real tough time selling it on. Imagine telling his missus why they spent all their kids' <laughs> university <laughs> money. But also, it's like, but also, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, but this thing's traded you, hands you what? twelve twelve a times. Monkey <laughs> JPEG. Oh god, sorry, babe. <laughs> this thing, this thing's been traded twelve <laughs> times in the last five days for a million quid a pop. Like, and now it's stuck with me. Why isn't it going up? If it's something that's been traded 12 times, why, yeah. why, you got to ask why it's been traded 12 times, right? It, obviously, that's like a flag, a red flag, right? You, and I the, can't believe how long we've been speaking about this. This is a problem, like people getting scammed. But Im so imagine, right, you didn't, you, you, the thing is, a lot of people don't understand it, right? And they s see all the hype. So imagine you spent three years working on your company, mm. you saved loads of money in your company, and then all of a sudden, you, got hyped up into this one thing and you were like i'm gonna buy an asset for I'm, our company i know why they're using these celebrities do you not think that they've like given eminem the ape in the hope that because he'll sell it easily won't he the day eminem decides that he wants to sell his bored ape he'll have a queue around the bend of people yeah. that want to buy it so that's the that's the thing maybe Maybe unless they've got like a some kind of say you were Eminem, I sell give it. you a minted ape, yeah. and I go, we're going to say that this was you know you bought this for a million dollars. Yeah. If Eminem spins around in two days and goes, I'm selling it for two million dollars, someone will pay that. Probably. Yeah, and then they're they're the mug. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Listen, NFTs uncovered right here with <laughs> me, Spencer Matthews. But if you the thing is, if you if you create NFTs and they're like fifty quid, yeah, fine. 
fine. It's like a ticket then. Yeah, fine. Just like, that's cool, you know, and have a bit of fun with it. But if people are trying to, there's, act, there's people actively out there trying to scam people, mm. you know, and that's the scary and that's the sad thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, because there's kids, there's kids buying this stuff. You know, there's like, there'll be like 15 year old kid saved all their money. Go, oh, I'm going to buy this for a thousand dollars. It's going to make money. And they get ripped off. It's just sad. But NFTs in the future, I think once it goes through this sort of like stage, yeah, and people like a bit more savvy to it, then people create NFTs that are like 50 quid, 100 quid, and they've got a value to it. Yeah. You know, and you can have a bit of fun marketing. Like for your company, you could have a bit of fun marketing with it, you know, create a bunch of NFTs, you know, for not much money. And then, yeah, that's it really. The thing is, those bored apes, they were minted for free. They were given out for free in the beginning. Mm. Like people didn't go and buy them. They were like given out, you know? So they started off at nothing. And then loads of, loads of um, PR. How do you think the art world likes it? They're probably being like, oh man, those fuckers are scamming. Those fuckers are getting like uh, saving tax as well. Imagine being like just a famous artist. You'd just be like, what is going on? Yeah, or well, art is just, a, I mean... Do you yeah, have the same view on art? Well, I, like, because I, I, I did advertising at uni and my dissertation was, the question was, is advertising art? That was my dissertation. But it can be. No, I don't agree, uh, personally. But how, like... The problem is art is so skewed now, subjective. It's like now anything could be art. The That's day the, the day that I saw Tracy Emin's Unmade Bed upset me. Why? Well, because I just didn't consider it to be art. I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it is ridiculous. Well, yeah. Well, there you go. So, like, you know, where were we? The Tate Modern? There was some other bloke who just put, like, a toilet, like, on a wall. Yeah. And it was just like, that's just bad plumbing. And do you know what that is? That's <laughs> NFTs back in the day. And the, here's the problem with it. It's Charles Saatchi. You know, remember Charles Saatchi? Saatchi, yeah, yeah. Saatchi? Yeah, yeah. He's the one that signed all those lot. Damien Hurst, yeah. all those people. Because he had a gallery. And he was like, how the fuck am I going to get people in here? Okay, let's make bullshit and get it in the newspapers. So we've got people like Tracy Emin who got drunk on TV and all, this, all these PR things. He took them on like pop stars. Yeah. He, with his advertising background, created PR stories, made them famous. So no matter what they did, and because he owned the gallery and he put all their crap in the gallery and people were turning up to see this bed that she had sex in for two weeks because it was a PR story. Yeah. That was art, apparently, but it's not. It was just some really clever advertising guy taking on a load of people out at uni, like Brit school, you know, like Adele, how yeah. they take them out. Yeah. They take them out and they go, right, get drunk on TV. Like, okay, go and shit in a bed or whatever you want to do. I'm going to put this in a gallery and create PR stories. And then, the, and then they go, oh, the bed's worth two million quid. And then it's literally like NFTs in a weird way. Yeah. But... Saatchi had a gallery the, and he yeah. needed shit to put in, but yeah, he was but, a do you not, but do you not find it? Doesn't make it art. No, but well, what is art then? If you like, so, so, do well, you not think it's culturally well, no, interesting? The, the, the definition of art, right? Yeah, because I, I actually studied all this, right? I can't remember the definition off the top of my head, but it's basically taking an idea, yeah, yeah like your idea, yeah, yeah, and then using a the skill. Back in the day, it was painting or whatever it is, sculpture, sculptures. Um, and then creating something, and then that's your piece of art. But the problem is, as time went on, that all changed, you know? Mm -hmm. And now it's literally got to a point where you can go on an app and create a 10,000 JPEGs. Have you spoken to KSI about NFTs? I haven't. He's been on this, hasn't he? No, I don't think he's got NFTs, has he? Yes, he does. Yeah. He's, he's got some. He's fucking all over it, mate. Absolutely swears. What's he got? He got bored apes. Mate, he's absolutely, he? he's absolutely swears by it. Shall I text him? KSI reckons he's made millions of pounds, physical pounds, off, off board apes, off trading NFTs. I'm going to message him right now. But there's a video out recently where he lost a lot of money on some. That's projects. that's one of the reasons I can't. I what don't happened? think it's completely bollocks <laughs> because a lot of people actually make money from it. I'm going to message him right now. Imagine, imagine, imagine if he didn't know we're on the. Well, he's not going to know we're on the pod. But imagine. No, I'm going to tell him right now. Ready? Hey, dude, how's it going? Random one. I'm just doing a podcast talking about NFTs and um, Spencer Matthews, I'm doing it with, said that you made tons of money out of uh, NFTs. And my sort of opinion on them is that they're basically 99% of them are scams. I, you know, I hope I'm wrong in the future, but have you made loads of money? Done. 
That'd be amazing if he comes back. Because actually, it's it's more the I, I can I can kind of see how some people just yeah. But he he swears by it. He reckons he's made millions. Really? Has he been given loads? There was a video only up, up the other day. Um, you know that Daniel Mac guy who goes like, "What'd you do for a living, nice car?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was him and Logan in their van, and he's like, "Oh, I spent a lot of money on, on AFTs, made a lot of money. It turned out they were like uh, wish NFT, uh, wish NFTs, board apes, like dodgy ones." But he, he says he's made a lot of money on them as well. Yeah, but that could have been a setup video too, right? Mm-hmm. Like if just I did exactly what you did the other day, by the way. So when when like somebody else was talking to me about NFTs, yeah. and I and I just screenshotted a bald ape and I sent it to them, and I was like, "Look, I have a bald ape." <laughs> <laughs> so Do you so, think, so I I did what you did, yeah. uh, and then you know, it, it, but I I kind of I kind of under, I I kind of see it, and I and I quite like it actually. But I'm not I'm not I think it is just it has to be. Uh, it's kind of a generational thing. Mm. Like like the, the the younger kids, the Gen Zs or Zs or whatever they're called, whatever that, yeah. Will, will will like they they don't know any difference. So this yeah. to them is hot and it's tradable and it and it works. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. to us, we're just like, well, what is it? Well, I, I'm I, I look I looked I researched it, looked into it, and I couldn't get my head well, around. Nobody nobody really knows what it is. It's like. t- it's too easy to lie. That's the problem with it. Yeah, you know. So that's the problem with it. It hasn't gone back to me yet. <laughs> a, a, a laugh he went oh mate that's such a scam and then I, I played it on here I, 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 would, I would adore it if, yeah, that, if, that, if that happens um, what are you saying? I know it's a mess C- carry on um, so what else have you been up to? Um, got another kid? yeah another kid coming out my 6 o'clock call went well as well that's good um, I'll just uh, I'll just apologise later <laughs> I'll say, I'll say we, had, we, we had a chat about NFTs for an hour, which we weren't supposed to. Um, what was I going to say? No, um, I did the Marathon de Sable, which was great fun. Oh, did you? Yeah, you know, like four years ago, I couldn't tie my shoelace without sweating. Yeah. And now, mate, like, all is good. All's gravy. It's what was your time? Just under 40 hours. Wait, wait, wait. It, it's six and a half marathons. In five days in the Sahara. No way. Yeah, that's mate. actually legit. It's actually legit. Yeah, yeah that's it, a legit it, story. To yeah, talk about. It, it's, it's the world's toughest foot race. Wait, why did you do that? Why? Yeah, what made you want to do that? Um, honestly, I read that it was the world's toughest foot race and I thought, well, great. We should give it a go. I like all that stuff. Do I'm you? a David Goggins kind of fan. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Stops drinking, becomes David Goggins. Yeah, yeah. I love that man. No, but I like I all that. It. I like yeah. all that. He's a no-nonsense guy. I've never done anything like that before. And I just thought... Have you done nine, man? I've done a half. So, no. What's that? A man? A- an iron. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it was epic, actually. I loved it. I, lo- I, I did actually love it. I realised like, that I didn't take any music. Lots right. of people had music. Right? So it's a long, old race. It's 250 kilometers. And I had no music. Quite a lot, actually, weirdly, you're on your own. Really? And at times I thought to myself, I wish I had, like, Journey on. Yeah. Not this Journey. Journey. Oh, yeah, of course. Don't the, stop the behaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And on, like, re- on repeat. Or David <laughs> Goggins. Yeah, or David Goggins. Would have gone down well, actually. But instead, you were just kind of alone with your thoughts. We could do it. This is a better story. Do you want to do an Iron Man? That could yeah. be a thing we do. Yeah, okay. Oh, I don't know I'm doing another, one. I'm doing uh, another ultra at the end of Feb, February 22nd. How many miles and how long is the swim and all that? Uh, no, I'm doing, uh, it's 230 kilometres. It's in Arctic, Sweden. Apparently I'm going to be treated to the nor- uh, Northern Lights, which I'm very excited about. How cold is the water though? It's, my, it's going to be minus 40 Yeah, no, night. I'm okay. I'm busy. When is it? 22nd to the 26th of February. I'm definitely busy. Ah, oh, it's a shame. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing that. I, 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 li- I like the idea of doing the five toughest foot races on earth. Because <laughs> I, I listened to David Goggins podcast one day and I thought, yeah, that's a bit of me. Did you watch the, um, that 
the, is it the Peaks? Fourteen Peaks? Or yeah. Was it? You watch that? Yeah. Nims Die, I think his name yeah, or yeah. something. Like that. Nims Die. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I spoke to him about doing a podcast. Yeah. Might be happening. I know him. Do you? Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. We're working. At, ugh, I sound like such a secretive. Like we're we're, we're working on a pro, on a on a film in May. Really? Yeah. You're doing something with him. Uh, well, we're supposed to be. Haven't heard from him <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> in, in in about a week. Uh, but but yes, uh, he's in Antarctica at the moment. Can you, so. t- can you tell me what you're doing? Not really, because it's not. I'll tell you after this. I just don't want to broadcast. But I'll I'll tell you afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, really boring for the listeners. But no, it'll be. I'll tell you what. If it if it gets fully green lit. Yeah. Uh, and we're and it we're and we and it goes into production. Yeah, I'll come and we'll chat about it. Okay, I'll give you the only podcast interview. On it. How about that? <laughs> okay, that sounds fair. No, it'll be good. Like it, it, it should be like an incredible film. Okay, good. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. What's your plan with what, your company? Like my goals with your company. Because in you've done pretty good in three years. Yeah. How are you going to top it? Um, unlock the rest of the states. So we're in seven states. You know, I want to be in 44, you know, at least. Um, so, you know, just, just expand uh, rapidly into the states. Um, obviously, I've got, a, I've got a, a, a third child uh, on the way in April. Um, Great name, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> You can't tell anyone. I can't tell anyone anything. Anymore. I could probably make a fortune with Daily Mail if I called it. Call Daily Mail. It'll make yeah, 10 yeah. grand. Get, the, get them on. Whoever picks up first, KSI or the Daily Mail, <laughs> will get the information. Um, no, I guess, you know, stay, stay sober, stay healthy. Uh, you know, hopefully the pregnancy goes all right. Obviously, not mine, my, my wife's. Um, and, you know, we, our, our plan and our forecast for this year is, uh, I mean, incredibly aggressive. Um, how aggressive because talking last time we were talking about three million revenue wasn't it in the year yeah that was your target yeah you weren't in America at that point no so the the first target was was three um, then it was then it was eight and uh, and the year three is 27 so yeah it should be good we're like, that, like a lot needs to go right, you know. A lot can go wrong, but we have like a really incredible team who I think can deliver, you know, all sorts of things that we wouldn't be able to do if with with a normal kind of independent startup team. So you know, we basically have a bunch of absolute heavy hitting industry leading pros who've done this kind of thing before. Um, so you know, we should have an unnatural advantage. Which is the point? Yeah, you've got a legit team in America, by the sounds of it. Yeah, no, they're pretty. They're high end. I told Lana, who's our head of marketing, our, our chief brand officer, that I'd be talking about her on today's podcast. She's the ex uh, vice president of Beyond of of um, AB and Bev's Beyond Beer division. So she did all the seltzers or anything that wasn't beer. Yeah. For for AB, um, and she's like honestly working with her is like, it's amazing. How she, did you meet Lana? Through Jim. Okay, so Jim, she's part of Jim's team, really, but obviously she she works across the marketing for the whole business. Yeah, she's something else. Really? Yeah, you should be talking to her. Really? <laughs> she, she's she's very she's very interesting. So she built Aperol Spritz. She built built Aperol in the states. Really? Well, it's a tricky market. She she's uh, you know like you wouldn't have thought necessarily that the U.S. would fully warm to a you know a, a spirit like Aperol. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, but it's, it's a, obviously a very famous drink now that she spent years kind of building. Um, so, you know, I think if she can do that, this this proposal is far less complicated than that one, in my opinion. Yeah. And what's her job? She's chief brand officer. In America so, or just everywhere? Uh, everywhere. Globally. Globally. Yeah. What's your role now? I'm, 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 I take more of a kind of founder role. I'm founder and CEO, but, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm your you know, stereotypical CEO. I'm, I'm more, I'm across the whole business. Like our business is now run by a, a, a global executive committee, basically, yeah. which reports into the board. I'm on the board, but I'm also in the global executive committee. Uh, we meet weekly, you know, and that's how the business is run. Um, and then, you know, we have kind of, you know, CFO, as you'd expect, and a, and a head of ops and, you know, chief yeah. brand officer across marketing. And, 
you know, all of whom make up the Global Executive Committee and we just, we, we meet and are in touch regularly. But my, yeah, G- Jim Clerkin is the US CEO and I'm the kind of UK CEO, I suppose. Yeah. Although I, you know, I, I would be more than happy for a lot of people in our team to kind of lead the charge. They're, they're fantastic. Do you see that Elon Musk interview where he's talking about titles? I love him. He's talking about titles. He's like, they're all just bollocks. CEO, CFO, it's like all bollocks. Well, yeah, like we, you know, we actually use it. Well, we don't think. I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying we don't. We don't see them as bollocks. But but like we have, we have like a head of finance and a head of ops and a head of marketing. You know, and that's CFO and yeah, you know, head of ops and. I wonder if titles will change in the future. Well, if NFTs are anything to go by, I I suspect they probably will. (laughs) Maybe give an NFT with every new employee. Yeah, yeah. This, you get health insurance for this. Yes, this entitles you to a minor amount of equity uh, and and a bathroom pass. Actually, that that could actually work. Mm. You get shares, yeah, with an NFT, yeah, and those shares are worth something in the future. They might go up, might go whatever, yeah. But then I don't know. It was also part of my master plan. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've, I've completely Can you imagine if I go I've away com- and I make millions from NFTs? I'll, I'll, be I'll, like, I'll come back and we'll have I'll, another chat. Hey, guess what? It's real. <laughs> like eight watches. Yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> All the way around. Jake Paul. You like, just can't even lift your arm for the watches. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, ugh, so heavy. <laughs> um, but I, no, so, so yeah, all good. I think NFTs in the future will be good. But they need to, I just think the value needs to be like figured out. That's all. But if a lot, of people, a lot of people get scammed in the first thing, it, it might be hard to get it back. Mm. Imagine that guy did another music festival, fire festival guy. He'd kind struggle of, with that. He'd struggle, I think. He'd struggle. <laughs> you know? like, he'd struggle. His, he, he was just like... He's just a legend. Mad, though. He's yeah, a but legend. he's just mad, though. He, I, it, it, he, was just, he, was, he was like blindly signing stuff off, knowing that it wasn't happening. Yeah. But like, what did he think was going to happen? Like, well, I was watching that and I don't get like, I'm not thrown by anything. I find everything quite easy to have. Like I can watch horror films, yeah. right? And not jump or react weirdly. And the whole way through that, I was just like, but how does he think it's going to turn out? I just thought the whole thing was absolutely bizarre. Yeah. I mean, It was just like, we'll all just chuck them on this little concrete bit of this weird island that's not the island we said it was going to be. Yeah. And they can all stay in these tents with no beds and then and hopefully <laughs> no one will like object to it oh and by the way there's no water yeah nothing it's just like but what but why though why do you just, right? just organize it properly do you know what right is that i i think and i mean i've watched the documentary and i've like made an assumption from it but i've organized events and i've organized events with no money no one believed in it from the beginning yeah. right and the thing is he had that pablo escobar's island yeah right and they said you can't use the name and that is a mistake of a young guy, yeah. right? Because he was like, no, no, I'm just going to use the name. But the problem was, after that, they were like, no, you can't do it here now because you use the name, yeah, right? And I've experienced that before, right? Not on that scale, but um, we, we, were don't, um, we were raising money for children in need. Yeah. And we put the logo on our website and they kicked off. And we were like, but we're raising like thousands of pounds. And they're like, you can't use our brand. And we were like, shit. And they, they threatened, threatened us with lawyers. So we ended up giving the money to um, save the children. Yeah. But the weight of that came and we were like, oh no, this is, people are all going to ask questions now why we're not um, sending money to them because we had the logo on. Yeah. And, and that was like, they nearly like, they really kicked off, like BBC kicked off. Um, and so because he used the name of Pablo Escobar's Island in the marketing and then they went nah. then he had a scramble, right? And that, the thing is, if he wouldn't have done that, yeah. he might have done it. Yeah. Like he might have done it. Like so, I, like I've got like a not a soft spot for him, but I I, I see where he's coming from because I've done those events. When you're doing events, you're trying to get everyone involved. You're trying to you know do it. Yeah, and he he spent twenty five million dollars. You know, but it's, it's terribly organised though. Like. It, yeah, I mean the thing is they had everyone. They had a massive team. Like it, I mean, obviously that guy who wanted to suck dick and stuff. That I mean, you got to have those guys. If, if you've got a guy like that <laughs> batting for you, then what? That what uh, can't that, you achieve? That is a guy I'd like to do a podcast with, right? Um, from like three meters away. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, I, so I do feel a bit for him. Like he managed to raise, like you, raised twenty five, thirty million dollars for this yeah. idea, you know. But he was young, and it, it, the mistakes were there. At what point do you think just, he realized that he'd gone too far, and that it was you couldn't save it? 
I think on the day. Well, I think the on the I think on the day. I think he still had that much hope. You know, yeah, like you say, na- like, naivety no, I, no, and the blind like, faith. Yeah, but you come know, on. Like, you know when everyone was like, when everyone flew in. Yeah. And like there's, and then they're all on this bus. Like straight away, you're like, Ooh. yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, and then it's like you know they're all supposed to have Should've beach view villas. It's just like there's no villas. Mm. And then there's that little restaurant. It's all coming yeah. back to me now. And everyone's just sat outside this restaurant. Terrible. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you do, but the money's gone as well. Money's gone. He's and in jail, is he, this guy? He's in jail, but not for that. He wasn't oh, yeah, in jail no, he got that. He got out and then did something else really stupid. Yeah, I think there was like scam people with tickets. I don't know. But um, but that that's the thing. Like, you know, he, he should have just postponed it and he probably would have got, got away with it. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> Like he probably could have put on a better event the year after. Yeah. Like and you know, but I don't know. Events are hard. But this is what I mean. Events how crazy hard. is it? Like, where, like the money, just raising the money for that. Like, no one doing any kind of DD on that at all. Everyone just like blindly trusted him. Yeah. Well, well it was a cool idea, right? The idea was sick. It was a festival, and, isn't it? Yeah, it's a festival, and it was. I'm gonna be on an island and that kind of stuff. And luxury and stuff like that. But I'd that, just be worried if I threw a big festival on an island that no one would come. Well, if you had like imagine Kim that Kardashians and all that posting orange squares and then creating a huge hype NFT style. Yeah, you know, you know, people would go to it. If Bored Apes did a music festival on an island, right? Everyone they're would want to go. They're doing club nights. Brilliant. They are. Yeah. But but people will want to go, right? Because of the hype. I saw a picture on my way here of um, of a club. It looked like live in Miami, absolutely packed, yeah. full. I mean, like thousands of people in there, with everyone holding these like massive, big board ape cutouts. Get out! Yeah, mate, I saw it, and I thought, she go to one. I thought, wow, this, this, go to one. these apes have to be legit. <laughs> <laughs> They've all got my logo yeah, on them. Yeah, exactly. It's Connor. <laughs> Connor is in the streets. And, and the worst up. thing about it is the apes all looked so upset, like they weren't having a good time. Really, they all looked bored. Yeah, yeah. They look ripped off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, you know, Ford Apes did a festival on an island. People would probably go right but now. But why don't we should do a festival, call it the Board Ape Festival. Okay. Everyone would mistake it for an NFT festival. It wouldn't matter. Like, yeah. you need a Board Ape to enter. Everyone would just, you know, crop the JPEG. Mm. Away we go. If you, do you know what, right? I actually went to Necker Island in yeah. the British Virgin Islands. Yeah, yeah. Right? About eight years ago. Because I had an idea of doing a music festival on Necker Island. Yeah. No joke. What did Richard have to say about it? Um, I did a proposal for it, but I wanted it to be the most exclusive music festival in the world, 200 people, but all paying like really, really high money for it. Yeah. Yeah, it was called Insula Festival, which means island in Latin. I know, thanks. Oh, dear. I went to Eason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Insula. <laughs> yes, yeah. mate, thanks. Some people might not in- know, right? Insula. Yeah. Lovely. Um, I sent it to them and they said, come out, we want to talk to you about it. And so I flew out there. I've got a picture of me in Branson's house. Yeah. That's very nice, mate. But I didn't do it. Why not? Logistics. Um, getting all the equipment out there and all that kind of stuff. It basically, would have you'd have needed like probably about half a million quid to put into it. But if the tickets were, say, uh, 10 grand each, yeah. 200 people, yeah. Yeah. It would make money. Lovely. But it was too much of a risk and like my network wasn't that affluent at the time. This a long time ago. But that my I literally went over to Necker Island to plan it out. But the other thing is as well is that um because there's only thirty six you can only have thirty six people on the island, we'd have had to rent a boat in. But I wanted to put teepees on the beach, but because it's so there's so much hurricane hur- it's like hurricane seasons yeah. and all that stuff. I didn't know about that. That's why I went out there. They said, we need to show you around to, so you understand that you can't do that here. Yeah. And when I watched Fire Festival... Yeah, I was about to say you sound like him. Well, no, I didn't do it though. <laughs> I didn't do it because I did my research. I literally flew out there and was like, no. Nah. And also I didn't lie and say, oh, I bought this island or whatever. Yeah. You know, these Gigi things. Hadid's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that was the thing. Like I had a whole idea, concept for it. And I literally researched it and didn't do it because it wow. didn't make sense. Don't give up on your dreams, mate. No, I wasn't that bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that bothered about it. <laughs> what did KSI say? Let me see. He hasn't responded. Yeah. He's probably selling his drink. Prime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sold out, apparently. Well, it's hard to tell. Connor, yeah. you buy some. Yeah, UK and February. Yeah. He, he's got a sideman coat. Yeah. 
he's it's hard to tell you know with all this sold out stuff though like how much of it is sold out well sold out means all of it I guess how much is all of it could be a marketing stunt right well there you go hey there could have been we're only very been like pessimistic <laughs> today <laughs> no but it's true though isn't it it's, it's kind of like you know yeah. unless you you list pre like before you launch unless you make public how much product you have yeah a sold out banner is absolutely pointless absolutely that's like me launching a fashion brand and going like imagine nothing sells on the first day and i'm really embarrassed and I just go, it's all sold out yeah i'm not saying that their drink didn't sell yeah but you know but no that like we're not we had a, we, we, we're ma- just... we made like two thousand bottles of clean co at the very very beginning yeah and like they sold out so we said it sold out but like yeah. You know, it, we could have said it sold out in 28 minutes, like a Justin Bieber concert. You know, yeah. what difference does it make? Marketing. Well, yeah. It's just all marketing. But that's what, that, we're not being pessimistic. We just, tell, t- I always say to people, just do your own research. Mm. If you buy an NFT, sell it for more money, cool. Fair enough. You, and that's fine. Like, that's great. But be careful. Yeah. That's all. But buy this because it's bloody good. Yeah, yeah. This is actually good. It makes you want to drink again. Clean co. Anything but dry. Hey, wait! I saw your ads. Yeah, They're all over London. Yeah, thank you. Um, but what was it? It was like, what was the main one? The, the main line? You said it to me earlier. I used to be an insufferable drunk. Now I'm just insufferable. I used to be an insufferable drunk. Now I'm just insufferable. Correct. Yeah. Was that a quote from your missus? No. About you? Oh. No, no. It was. Uh, that just, it came from within the marketing team. <laughs> it, it, yeah. What was it insufferable? Yeah. It's good that they have a high opinion of you. No, I think the adverts were supposed to be self-deprecating. <laughs> It was quite fun. I like that one. You're like, all right, guys, that's enough. I used to be the most dreadful drunk. Now I'm just dreadful. Yeah? Yeah, it was that kind of thing. Insufferable. Maybe you're right. It was insufferable. Yeah. Yeah, I checked it. Well, there you go. You're not like that, though. No. Well, you know, it depends, I suppose. You're that fun to be around. You're my first guest that I've had on twice. Is that true? Yeah. And for two hours. Has it been two hours? Nearly. No. Really? Plenty. Well, NFT took up. Uh, We've only talked about three things. <laughs> like, really? It's been an hour and 40. Yeah. Chaos. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love hanging out with you. No, I do too, mate. We'll come, I'll come on for a third time when I get my next project lit. NFTs? No. Come back with like bling, like gold around your neck. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make a specific <laughs> point. Even if my, my minted bears uh, go badly, I'm going to, I'm going to just wear seven watches next time I come. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. Maybe you can give me a watch next time you come instead of this drink stuff. I'll, swap, f- I'll swap it for a board ape. To be fair, I can get you a board ape. Not that guy. one. Not that one. I'll get you whatever you want. You just <laughs> tell me the spec and I'll get it made for you. Um, but you I l- want an l- exact replica. Last time you came, you didn't bring me anything. And I like how you, you sent me something after, which I appreciate. What did I send you? You sent me some bottles. It was did like I? a nice pack, yeah. Oh. Someone did. Well, yeah, um, no, it would have been me. And then this time you bring dub, you double up. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like I just want to make sure that any guests that you have on that you know don't drink alcohol can have something to drink. Well, they could, but you didn't sponsor the channel. What do you mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'm back. I spoke to your guy. That's, that's good enough. No, but he, he doesn't work for us anymore. Good. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, so, no, so, so no. If you wanna, if you wanna open that conversation again, yeah. No, you're going to have to dub that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're, surely you're going to dub quite a lot of this shit out, are you? No, none of it. What? None of it. You leave the whole episode up for like, so people are going to listen to us chatting for an hour and 40 minutes? Probably. Do you always just leave it up? Yeah, we, we just don't edit anything. Really? No, we've never edited anything. Yeah, it's not... It, God, it's not I like, often say things in the comfort knowing that it'll be cut out. No, we don't edit anything, apart from that email. That's it. But I'll talk to Jenny. <laughs> I'll talk to Jenny. <laughs> Um, okay, great. I'm now. I now need to think about all the things wait, that I said. We'll be you, all right, will we? Yeah, we'll be fine. Um, okay. Will Will you? Okay. I'm asking now. Yeah. Are you going to sponsor the podcast? We need to have a proper look at it, mate. What's in it for us? You want clean coat over everything? You how, want how many cool it? guests have you got? Um, really cool guests. How much is it going to cost me? Not much. Well, sounds good then. Couple hundred grand. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you my board eight. <laughs> Yeah, but with, when you sponsor the channel, you get an NFT with it. Oh, like okay. all in that case. <laughs> yeah, done. Okay, cool. And you can sponsor the Amica Festival if you want. The what? Fitness Festival. That used to be my favourite nightclub, Amica. Do you remember it? High Street Ken? Nope. 
What were you? Where were you then? Wait, with a K though. I remember it. Yeah, Amica, yeah. Amica, yeah. I used to run their Thursdays. Really? Yeah. Long before Clean Co. Really? Yeah. I thought that was a fun night. I, I, I remember that place actually I went. It was good fun, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Look how things have changed. Much prefer my life now, just to be clear. <laughs> Selling NFTs. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an absolute NFT dealer. Oh, how do you do that? Don't know yet, but you wait. You wait. Big things are coming. Next time you're here, honestly. Yeah. Collab with KSI. Mate, if KSI wants to collab with me on NFTs, I'll do it. Yeah? Yeah, why, don't you, why don't you pitch it to him? Okay, I will. Okay, thanks, mate. All right, everyone. <laughs> well, thanks for listening. <laughs> the next time you watch one of these, it's going to be full of this because Clean Care are going to sponsor. Do you think, realistically, if any... Yeah, 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 we will. Why not? Do you think, realistically, that if people see this episode with me is an hour and 45 minutes long, that they're going to listen to it? Yeah. Really? I wish I was said more interesting stuff now. I thought it was just, you know, anyway. Well, there'll, there'll, well, there'll be mean, an episode three. So collectively, yeah. So the first step was what? Anyone know? Was it more than an hour? Yeah, probably. So you, we've got two hours. Of, I don't think I've ever had a longer conversation documented with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so so well, you, you've got nearly three hours of, of documented conversation with me now. Yeah, we'll probably push him forward. And by the time we do ep three, it'll be like... Six hours. Yeah. And we physically, we've been around each other for about eight hours. Not even, actually. Probably yeah. not. Uh, this is the beginning of like a documented relationship. Like, I've never seen you outside of this. I never so leave. Actually, so actually, <laughs> actually I'm just every here. single time we've ever spoken to each other has been recorded, yeah. which is unbelievable. That's kind of weird. Well, we should, do, we should do more of it. And then we can... Why don't we do the, the, the documentation of the Clean Co journey through you? Okay. Well, once a As year. As part of the sponsorship. Like once a year. Yeah, we could do that. Well, we'll I'll just come on like every so often. How about outside of this though? We go, for, I'll bring my girlfriend. Yeah. You bring your missus. Okay. Um, you get babysitter in. Lovely. We go for food. Yeah. So we'd have to bring a microphone though. Okay. <laughs> I, I got to <laughs> set up in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, we only talk on mics. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it, it, it has to be documented. <laughs> but other than that, fine. My girlfriend and your missus be like, "What is going on?" Okay, eating Let's their do pasta. It. All right, deal. All right, mate. Lots of love. Thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah, and li- oh yeah, God, it's watching as well. Yeah, li- and listening, of course. Yeah, for those of you that don't have access to video, or is it video everywhere? Perfect. It's everywhere. We we plug it into the metaverse now. You don't even have to Shit. be awake. So you can actually inhabit my body. Yeah. I, what, how, just, just a quickie. <laughs> what, what, what would you do to change your body in the metaverse? What would you do? How, how would you make your appearance? What's Everyone's going to end up looking the fucking same, by the way, in the metaverse, just so you know. Are they? Everyone's going to be tall. Everyone's going to be beautiful. I thought they're going to be like um, a Ready Player One, you know, where they have like monsters and all this kind of stuff. Why would you choose to be a monster when you could be like a kind of Greek god? I don't know. I'd be out of fly. That'd be I'd come back thing. as Leonidas, I think. From, well, not even come back. I'd just turn into Leonidas from 300. Yeah. He's banging in that film, to so, be fair. You definitely wouldn't mess with him. Yeah. He wouldn't get his watch nicked. No, he wouldn't. No. He would or phone. Anything. Nothing. People just give There'd him be no, phones. Yeah, yeah. Pl- like, like, yeah, exactly. Imagine. Get your hand chopped off. What would you look like in the metaverse? Probably pretty similar to how I look now. <laughs> like, let's be honest, I wouldn't change much. I was about to say that <laughs> word, you know, the one where he's frazzled. <laughs> but I can't remember. The cram version. The cram bazzled version. I'd still be a mumpsomus. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> You'd be just a, a like yeah. wrecked, drunk version of you. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. All right. We'll see you in the metaverse. I'll see you in Web3, mate. Same right. thing, right? Yeah. Perfect. Whatever. All right. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs>